Girl, open and show her true colors once again, and y'all still shook. <laughs> Girl, no man. Y'all already know what time it is. I got the black bean neck on. It's time for King of Reads TV video, and this is going to be kind of a special King of Reads TV video because we got a kind of like a lot going on in the headlines. Um, we have this Neverland documentary that came out on HBO. We also have Oprah interviewing these two alleged victims of Michael Jackson, and we just got a lot going on, girl. We also got R. Kelly is in jail for, um, you know, not pay paying child support. A lot is going on. Paul Manafort ass is gonna be sentenced, honey, and he walk around in wheelchairs. Girl, how you walk around in wheelchairs? But girl, that's exactly what these folks doing, so let's go and get into the team. So, I don't even know where to start at first, but there's been a lot of conversation about what is going on with this Leaving Neverland documentary that just came out this past weekend. It aired on HBO, um, I recorded it, I thought I was going to watch it at the time, but I, honestly, y'all, I just really was not sure how to feel about it. I remember, I remember long ago hearing about Michael Jackson and, and all the accusations and stuff, and you know, I, I knew that he was found not guilty, and all this stuff happened. And I always knew Michael Jackson was, you know, weird, but I didn't see him as someone who was being accused of doing the things he was doing. So I never really paid attention to it, but you know, we're in the new movement. We're talking about abuse and things that happen to people who are, uh, you know, are happening from good, so quote unquote good people, talented people. And sometimes we can't separate the things like, oh my gosh, I can never see them doing that. Um, and I think that was the case for me, um, but I'm still unsure how to feel about it, period. So I'm gonna first talk about the Neverland um, documentary. I myself have not, like I said, I have not had a chance to see it. I'm probably not going to watch it. Unless you all tell me to watch it, I'm not going to watch it too. I don't plan on it. So if, if it comes up with a lot of folks are saying, Justin, I would like for you to talk about it in detail, then I will. But I know that some of us are really, really tired. Like this is emotionally draining to hear things like this back to back. Like it is a lot going on. And at this point, I'm just like, girl, can we just breathe for a second? And sometimes I have to take myself, you know, back and be like, you know what, let me breathe for a second because if I keep consuming all of this, I'm gonna feel like the world is like this. And true enough, it is, and we do need to be, you know, we do need to know all the things that's going on, but we also need some positivity because, girl, sometimes this shit is overwhelming. So, how do I feel about it? Um, I don't know. If, at this point, I'm not interested in watching it because I, for myself, have not seen anything um, to make me believe that Michael Jackson did any of these things. It's a, it's very murky, and I feel like a lot of these folks were looking for money. I mean, we're all looking for money in some shape or form, like we're all doing it, but some of us will go, you know, different ways of trying to get it. And I just, I, I did, there's so many questions. You know, it was, uh, like it was apparent, um, you know, folks were capturing folks lying and being pressured to say these things. And there was this conversation about the FBI raiding Michael Jackson's house and doing all this stuff and found some stuff. Um, I think there was an article on, let me see, Daily Mail that said that, you know, hey girl, they found some interesting tapes and stuff in Michael Jackson's house. I, and I just, I, I, I was like, girl, what? And then also, you have some people saying, well, the FBI found him not guilty. And, you know, if these people were, were white and, and you mean to tell me that they ain't find nothing to get this man and you're like, I just don't see that happening. And I just don't know how to feel. Now, for one, I think celebrities are definitely capable of doing things and getting away with it because they know they have power, they have resources, and they have the money to be able to get out of situations like they will be able to do a lot of stuff so i think you know the more powerful that some of these celebrities get they don't think twice about doing some things because they don't see things how we see it like ordinary you know like everyday everyday people who are working just to pay the bills and stuff we don't see stuff like that we don't we don't see things like that these folks Honestly, think, girl, I got so much money, I can do whatever the hell I want to do. So with that being said, I, I, I just, I don't want to ever feel like I'm looking at somebody saying, I don't think they would do that. And I think I would, like, I think we need to be careful of that. And we also need to believe the victims. Now, it, there's so much talk about that because we had a conversation about it on In the Middle. You can check it out. We talked about Justice Smollett. And the things about, you know, victims 
and folks who probably are not victims and probably are using this to exploit to be able to make money. And I, I, I was watching um, my guy George Johnson, he was in the Grapevine video and he was talking and he has said that he will believe victims because, you know, there are not that many people out here just deliberately just lying just because. It's better for me to believe victims so people can believe me if something happens to me. I'm kind of paraphrasing a little bit, but George did a good job on um, the grapevine. Check it out. You have not seen it. Um, you know, really good. I'm, I'm glad that, you know, my queer black brothers were out here, you know, keeping it real and being honest. So it's kind of difficult. I, I want to have more conversations about that. If y'all are interested in it, let me know. So I don't know if I, but I, I, I'm just not sure about these two guys and Oprah Winfrey interviewed these two individuals she talked to them and then she responded to I haven't watched Oprah talk to these folks I have not given any energy to these people because I, I honestly see y'all are trying to make money and that's what I want to talk about Oprah Winfrey because Oprah Winfrey you know she said that you know we're gonna get a lot of backlash and kind of chuckled about it she said the black community blah, blah, blah. And it's almost like, I don't give a fuck because I'm going to do what I got to do. So Oprah tried to paint this picture, this narrative of, her, of the importance of her to give these boys some type of platform to tell their stories because it's important for the bigger picture. And I think it's kind of like interesting because Oprah Winfrey and Michael Jackson were close at one point. Like, this man allowed you in his house uh, and stuff. Like, Oprah, like, sis. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I just, I don't know. And I, and I don't think that reporters, like, folks, be, sh like, I don't think that celebrities sh shouldn't be able to call out their friends or anything. They've done some wrong and abused or hurt someone. But I don't think that Oprah is doing this for the bigger picture. I think she's doing it to serve herself. I think she's doing it to serve her network and trying to get ratings. Like you're not telling me, you're not telling me that Oprah is not out here doing this shit because it's important to give two white men a goddamn platform. Like, look how many, look how long, look how long it took for these black girls and all of this. And look how much work it took to get Lifetime's documentary up. And like, uh, like how long it took to get that thing up. This fucking shit is on HBO for crying out loud. Like, come on, like, let's be serious. Like, like Oprah, you, it's not that serious. So, I do 100% believe that Oprah did that for ratings. I don't think she gives a damn about that. Oprah is completely self-serving and she's a shapeshifter. And I will, I, I will, I will go down a hundred percent and saying that I don't trust Oprah and I don't mess, I don't fuck with Oprah at all. I really don't. Like I had a lot of respect for her. My mother had a lot of respect for her. My mother had a picture from her back when she was on, um, I think it was an NBC or whatever. Like she had signed a picture or something. My mama had it up in her house. Like she had it up on on one of the, um, the, the, the coffee tables and something. She was, she loved Oprah. And Oprah was doing a lot of work. But some people said well, Oprah was really just exploiting um, poor people's pain for, um, for coins and for dollars and stuff. And I don't know. So I just, I don't trust Oprah. And I know that's a hard thing to say in this, in this um, industry because Oprah is a very powerful person. She can say some stuff. And, and I will never see, I will never be on TV or anything. But the thing about me is, I'm not trying to do that and I'm trying to build my own shit. I'm not gonna be kissing nobody's ass to get ahead. I'm just not gonna be out here making people feel good and saying things that I don't believe to make folks feel good, like to, to, to stroke someone's ego. I don't trust Oprah. I don't like the way that she did Monique. And even after she said she's not fucking with Monique, she's not talking to him, she's not even answering any questions about her or whatever. But the fact that you sit up here after all this stuff happened, sat down with Amy Schumer, after uh, Monique was talking about Netflix and how the difference of their pay was, and you sat down with her and you called this woman the queen or whatever. Like, Oprah, you are you a shapeshifter. You are a manipulative individual, and I just don't trust you. And I think all this work that you did with these two individuals were beneficial for you, and I will go to my grave saying that. Uh, Y'all gotta watch Oprah Winfrey. People are saying, we're not counseling Oprah Winfrey. I think that we are so ready to see like black folks do good. We're so ready to see black folks out here making money just as much as the white folks and we definitely understandable. But I'm gonna tell you this and this is a hard pill, pill to swallow. Um, capitalism will not save black and brown folks. 
Capitalism or black capitalists will not save black folks. I'm telling you this, girl. I'm telling you this. I, I, I don't know how, and I did not believe that. I always believed if I was in a position to make more money, to be able to help my brothers and sisters out and do all that, like, I can do a lot. But at the same time, who am I stepping on to get this money? Where am I getting this money from? And how does this money influence me from doing the work uh, the good work. How does that? Because you can see how so many people change when they get a certain amount of money and they want to keep this money. And and you know it was this the shop talk on uh, with LeBron James and Two Chainz and some other black men were talking about having money and you know all the family members want to you know want some coin and stuff and like I owe you know two hundred thousand dollars because you said keep my head up I think they were kind of being a little bit I think honestly some of y'all ass were being I think in that video y'all was like pushing it like that it, it wasn't it, ain't nobody doing no shit like that but um I always believe that I want to take care of my folks like I always like made jokes about taking care of my mom and stuff I, and I my and my father like I want to do that but it just shows you like these folks want to make money we just saw, I think it was 2 chains sat there and talked about how much these folks asked for money, but then just gave LeBron James um, a damn iced out fucking necklace. Like, y'all get the fuck out of here with this bullshit. Like, like I said, black capitalists will not save black folks. And I just did not understand it at first, and I do. What that means is... Capitalism in this whole is not it's not sustainable for black people. It will always have to be some poor people at the bottom. There will always have to be some poor people or people people on the bottom for that to work out. So with that being said, I don't trust Oprah. And I know Oprah has done some work and stuff, and I know Oprah has got a little school and stuff. But y'all, y'all gotta look into the deeper things that these folks sit up here and do these things, knowing they're gonna get tax write-offs. These folks do these things because it makes their public image look good. And these folks still living in big million dollar homes and all that. Like, I'm not saying that, you know, they shouldn't. But what does a person, I, I, it, it's really, really too much. Like, what can a person do with $50 billion? Like, why is that necessary? And I'm really questioning, questioning. I think about that all the time, walking around um, the mall and stuff and seeing fountains. And motherfuckers ain't got drinking water. Like, I just, I don't understand this. Like, why are we... What is the purpose of us having a damn fountain with drinkable water? Like, what is, I don't get that. And I, and I found myself wrestling and being stressed out about this shit entirely too much. So I know I'm rambling, but um, Monique did a video and she did, her husband Sydney did a video and they basically, you know, just kind of, just kind of grilled um, Oprah and took some questions from the callers and stuff and people were saying that they didn't trust Oprah. They don't trust Oprah and they think that she did this for money reasons. And a lot of it, and Monique and, and Sydney made some good points about how Mo, how Oprah acts in certain places and how, you know, she did Monique the same way. She, you know, she interviewed Monique's, um, you know, family, the one that Monique said that this is the person who abused me. She, like, Oprah gave that person a platform to share their story. And after Monique said, sis, I don't know about that one. Like, I don't know if that's a good thing to do. And I, I think that was completely disrespectful. So if a per, like you if a person is able to do somebody else like that, if if Oprah is able to do Monique like that, who else do you think she would do like that? Like we have to think for ourselves, okay? What's not clicking? So with that being said, let me know if you want me to talk about um Neverland and you want me to watch these things, let me know, honey. I, it's going to take some energy, but if you want me to do it, I will probably look into it. So, moving on. Moving on, because it's going to be kind of a lengthy video, and I know y'all at work enjoying your Hey, girl, I'll see you, girl. Yeah, drink your coffee. Okay? So, um, let's talk about this bizarre interview with R. Kelly and his two alleged girlfriends, or whatever he's calling them this week. So, we all watched R. Kelly's um, interview with Gail King. Disturbing. Like, I just most of the bizarre shit I've ever seen. And yes, my grits turned out fine. I know a lot of folks were like, Justin, girl, you were talking about the grits. I didn't want, I don't like to burn up no damn food, girl. Food is high as hell and, I, and it's too cold for me to be out here trying to buy none. Buy some more, okay? I ain't got a couple of, I ain't got a couple of dollars. And I watched the interview. I woke up at seven o'clock in the morning to watch this interview and I saw Gail King sit, ask questions and R. Kelly just lose it. I think he is really wrestling with the fact that he might really serve some time for this. And he's gotten off of it. Let me tell you something, R. Kelly, and I, I wish I could speak to directly to you. I don't see how you sit here crying in front of this camera, 
and upset that folks out here are, you know, playing with your life or whatever. When you sat there and told them, you said in a when on a camera, yeah, like I don't know if you knew it was recording, but you said these folks should have got me for this shit years ago. They need to let this shit go. That's the shit that came out your mouth. That's the shit that came out of your mouth. Like you think that you are indestructible. You think that nobody can touch you because of your money and all of the stuff that you have and your celebrity. But that shit has ran out. Now you talking about some you didn't did this and all this blah, 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 and you didn't gave away all this. You gave these folks hush money, and now that you're not able to give them hush money no more, they don't value you as a person, and that's nobody's fault but you. Okay, you don't you don't have to be a hurt person that hurts people, and we're not gonna allow you to use that as an excuse to continue to hurt folks when you know that's not right. Now, personally, I think R. Kelly is wrestling with something. I really feel like that he might be on some type of narcissism type of shit because he really don't think he did anything wrong. There's too much stuff laid out. Like, sis, this marriage with Aaliyah, you knew that was inappropriate. You knew that was inappropriate. The, the, our relationship is very inappropriate. There's too many people putting you, you know, with certain stuff. Like, girl, the whole shit about the tape, we saw the tape. Like, girl, cut the bullshit out. You You've gotten away with this shit. And you're talking about something you can't double jeopardy me. So when you're saying that you can't double jeopardy me, is that that you're saying like, girl, I was tried for this and I, I might have did it, but girl, my ass got off. And I don't like that. I don't like this conversation about, oh girl, I was found not guilty or nothing. That doesn't mean your ass didn't do it. George Zimmer was found not guilty too, but we know what the hell he did. Like, cut this shit out. And here you're talking about some. Double Jeopardy. Double Jeopardy does not play into what you got going on, sis. Double Jeopardy doesn't play the part because we have new victims, new people who are actually going to interview and tell the truth of what happened. And girl, you just gonna have to deal with that. Like, you just gonna have to deal with that. And I think that the reason why you popped off in that interview is because, you know, you see it, you see it, and you're talking to Gail King, you, and you're trying to, like, Gail King is asking these questions, and then you blaming everybody else. Now, I understand the purpose of you doing this because I felt like it was public relations because you want to even the playing field when it came to like picking juries and stuff. And if you come out here and say, well, you know, I'm an innocent man, and that's a lie, they're going to have to take it. They're going to have to like say, okay, let me see. I've heard his side, but they've only heard one side. You messed up at was getting irate and started pointing yourself as the victim of this. And I think you turned a lot of folks off who people who were probably believing you. I think you turned them off even more. I think you just like, I think you just turned folks off and that's just what it is. I think like, I, 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 I see the importance from a public relations standpoint of him doing an interview because shit, Trump ass is doing interviews when he know he damn well he didn't did that shit. But he wants to give his, his side of the story too. Like R. Kelly, you blew that, you blew that. And that's just what it is. Like sis, I don't know what to tell your ass, but um, now R. Kelly's in jail. And and for child support, he owed plenty of child support. Girl, even the one of your ex-wife has said that you abused her. Like, how do you continue to explain this shit that that goes on? Like, what? Like, what? Like, make it make sense. So we saw these two girls, Jocelyn, Jocelyn, and um, what's her name, Azario Clay. These two girls who are R. Kelly's girlfriend sat in the interview with Gail King too, just saying. You know, we are being treated nice. We are we are loved. We are cared for, and all this other stuff. And our family are are, are scam artists, and they just want some money. If y'all can't see that, girl, y'all got introduced him to this man when y'all was very young. And this man is like double y'all age. Um, I don't know if I can trust any things that y'all are saying, uh, especially in no damn 21, 22. Because girl, I remember I had a damn ten thousand dollar credit card, and I was around here buying getting hotel rooms and buying Burger King burgers. Okay, and thought I and the first beer came and I ended up having to pay what I think seven hundred fifty dollars for my first payment. My dumb ass, exactly, girl. That shit went into debt, and I didn't never pay that shit off. Uh, but yeah, that's what it is. Like I think y'all have been brainwashed. Honestly, I hate to say it, but I do think that there is some type of brainwashing going on that has happened. And, uh, you know, Gail King was talking about, you know, R. Kelly wasn't necessarily in the room where they were being interviewed, but they know that he was there because certain parts, when they were talking, he was coughing. Like, he was coughing and stuff, like letting him know, letting them know that he was there. Like, that is some scary shit for a person to, like, be that close to you and not allow you to be able to tell whatever is going on. Everything is good. He shouldn't even have to be there. But they don't want them there because they know that shit ain't gonna look right. And it's just, it's it's not right. And I, it's just, it's just not right. I just, 
I was so turned off watching this shit. I'm really, I'm honestly at this point, I'm tired of CBS even talking about it because y'all been stringing this shit along to make money, to get ratings, to make money, to make some make more money. I don't even know how to feel about all the jokes and the memes and stuff. I just have so many questions. Just all of this shit is just very disturbing. And I think honestly, I'm just going to take a break for a couple of days because like a lot of this is just. I just cannot believe what is going on. Like, it's just way too much. I think that's it. I think that's the last interview they did. Um, R. Kelly's in jail now. He said he wanted to see his kids. That's the purpose of him doing that. I don't believe that shit. Do I feel like he should be in jail for not paying child support? Hell yes. Hell yes. He didn't give a damn about none of this shit at first, but now he do all of a sudden throw his ass in jail. Like, girl, we'll talk about that shit later. But um, I will be following the story as best I can and letting y'all know what's going on on KingofReese.com. If you've not seen the interview, make sure you're checking out KingofReese.com. Um, even R. Kelly's interview is on KingofReese.com, written by my girl, Miss Jessica Ray. If you've not checked out any of this stuff, girl, all the information is on KingofReese.com. Um, I'm going to call it a night. I hope y'all are um, enjoying my content I'm putting out for y'all, honey. I'm about to head out and get ready to head to go see Miss Captain tomorrow and see what she's going to say. Uh, I'm really, really, really in a good space other than that. I know I talked about a lot of emotional stuff, but honestly, I'm in a really, really good headspace right now. And I appreciate you all supporting me and keep uplifting me. I appreciate y'all so much. I love y'all. Y'all enjoy the rest of y'all evening, and I'll talk y'all later on tonight. Bye.